thank you so much. Let me share my screen and I'm not going to say the thing. If, can you see my screen? I'm just going to assume you can. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, yeah, a couple of people in here already. Welcome, welcome. Um, first, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining this talk. I hope it's something valuable for you. And um, I hope if you're not into, into the no code community, no code space, this would uh, help you look into it more. All right, so with that being said, uh, let me get to, where's my other computer? There we go. All right, hi. All right, uh, so when people first hear the term no code, people think of simple drag and drop tools like Squarespace, Wix, or something similar. However, the term no code doesn't simply mean to create websites without coding. It actually is just a label for the natural evolution of creating digital experiences faster and with a lower barrier to entry uh, to create websites and apps. Now, before I get into that, like I said, I'll introduce myself. My name is Nelson Oblos Jr. I'm a customer support spe specialist over at Webflow, and uh, I've been there for over five years. I've been web designing for well over 20 years, and I'm inspired by good humans, space exploration, and technology. I have a wife uh, named Jessica. She's a graphic designer, and I have a three-year-old daughter named Nova. Now, being a new parent, I'm watching my daughter grow, and I'm, live, I'm, I'm learning new things. I'm seeing the world through her eyes. And as I'm watching and learning with her, I'm learning that we humans, we all, we all learn visually. And as babies, we do that by trying to mimic other humans around us. And then later, as we grow to be toddlers, uh, we learn how to speak. Uh, we learn how to speak and we learn language. And language is just helping us put labels to things that we've already learned visually. Now, when it comes to building websites, we are taught the exact backwards way of doing things. You need to learn the language of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript before you can even start seeing what you're building visually. Now, for me, the way I got started was uh, back in the 90s, probably like 96, 97, um, uh, I was using a thing called GeoCities. And at the time, GeoCities uh, was a web page builder that had two modes. You can do basic mode or advanced. And the basic mode was basically this wizard, that they called it, that is a multi-step form. You fill out the form, once you're done, you press publish and bam, you have yourself a website. But then I was curious, what is this advanced mode all about? And when I went into it, I saw all this gibberish. I was like, well, what is this? All right, let me see here. Let me copy some of this and then paste it. And oh, my web page broke. All right, let me undo. What did I fix? What did I break? And then I would just do that over and over and over again. And then I realized, hey, wait, I'm learning HTML. But sadly, that same process of learning language first still exists today. For example, my wife, when she was going to college, um, she's a graphic designer. She's, um, one of her assignments was make a web page for yourself. And at the time, the professor gave them a book and said, okay, copy the code from the book and put it into Dreamweaver. And this frustrated my wife because if code broke or she typed in the wrong code, she wouldn't understand why. And if the code worked, she still wouldn't understand why. She didn't understand the core fundamental of what this tag that she's copying into her web page really meant. But thankfully for children today, they're learning how to code visually. For example, I uh, downloaded an app for, for my daughter, the Montessori Learning Academy app. And in that app, uh, it has multiple games. And one of the games is called Code Cards. And the object is to drag these 
blocks in a certain order so that way your cart doesn't crash and gets to the finish line. This is this is basically oh, let me press play. There we go. This is basically um coding. This is visual programming for toddlers. Um, and this is just one of the many examples that uh, kids use to learn how to visually program. For um, older kids, there's things like marble tracks. And I play with this with uh, my daughter too, where we're putting things together and some of the tracks go into a funnel, some of them split into two, some of them spin a wheel and some of them merge back into one track until it gets to the very end. Um, other kids are building robots using Mindstorms, or you build the robot with your imagination, and then you open up an app and program visually your robot. Minecraft is a great example of visual coding. There's these structures that can do funny things when you enter them, when you exit them, or when you're just looking at them. And you do this by uh, getting virtual material and crafting them together to make functions. And so what kids are learning is to start building things and then testing it. And if something breaks, children learn to fix it. And then if it's cool enough, they'll share it with their friends. This is basically what we do for coding all the time, right? Um, now, back into web design and, and coding, um, no code tools are starting to show up everywhere. VoiceFlow, Webflow, Wix, Squarespace, Bubble, MemberStack, Airtable, Zapier, Parabola, and so much more. But in actuality, no code, the evolution of tools have been with us for a long time. For example, let's uh, take making newspapers. You would need to get a typesetter and then you would need to put ink on that and roll it onto the paper and there you go. You have a newspaper. Um, but we don't do that anymore. We simplified that with Adobe InDesign. If you want to make a film and you need to edit that film, you'd have all these tape reels and then you would have an editor actually cut each part of the film and then merge it into one final reel. We don't do that anymore. We use Final Cut Pro. For creating music, you'd have all these complicated tape decks. You would record each instrument onto its own tape deck, and then you need someone to merge that all into a final tape reel. No longer, we just open up GarageBand, and we have all of our tracks there, and we can play our instruments in real time and, and see how it sounds. Um, this is basically uh, tool, modern tools that are inevitable, and it's helping people execute on their ideas. Uh, speaking of ideas, uh, rewind back to when the first iPhone came out. And I was an HTML email developer at the time for Active Network, and I just knew HTML. But when this device came out, just like everyone else, my mind just went, whoa, this is, this is changing everything. A mobile browser in your pocket, anywhere you go, this is insane. And so I thought, what if, so many what ifs, I had this idea, like at Active Network, uh, they, they help organize marathons. And so one of their uh, products is that champion chip where you can tie to your shoelaces a certain chip that when you run over a certain mile marker, it sends your bib and your time over to, uh, to a database. And if you're a friend or family member of that runner, you would have to go to a booth and search up the bib number for, um, for, that, uh, for your friend or family member to see where they are, see their progress. But I thought, why can't this person, why can't they just look it up on their phone? Um, another idea I had was if you're a new college student or you're confused about where your classroom is or where you have to go, why not have the phone's GPS tell you where to go with an arrow? Just, just telling you, hey, you should be going this way and here's where your classroom is. But at the time, I only knew HTML. I didn't know these things like 
Cold Fusion, Python, C Sharp, PHP. No, I didn't know none of that. I didn't understand servers. It was all gibberish to me, and it seemed like a big hurdle just to make a certain idea come out, to, to even prototype an idea. And so I just dropped them both. And um, I, it makes me think, how many ideas are out there right now that aren't being worked on? You know, people with uh, no coding background, but have these user experiences that they think, wait a minute, I have a solution for this. I should build it. But, oh, wait, I have to hire a developer. I have to find some funding. And how am I? It's too much of a task. You know what? I'm just going to drop it. Um, but now, with no code tools, you can prototype ideas on your own and see if the idea is good enough to continue with. For example, um, pixelgeek.community, my community website, I have a bunch of ideas. And with Webflow, Member Stack, Zapier, JetBoost, MailChimp, Airtable, Google Sheets, I'm able to merge all of these together like Lego bricks all on my own without having to rely on a developer to send data in and out of each app. And so this is the part where developers go, but wait, 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 wait. These are nice and all, but aren't these no-code tools going to take away my job? I hear that a lot. And I always answer with, no, they're not going to take away your job. In fact, these tools will do the, in fact, they'll do the exact opposite. It'll help streamline the basic stuff that you do, like writing HTML, CSS, and JS. That way you can gain time back to learn and create more complex code that no code tools can't yet create. Think of it this way. Uh, say you have a nail, your, your task is to drive a nail through a wooden board. You can take a rock, smack that down, you're good to go. But what's better than a rock? A hammer has a nice grip, good balance weight, smack it, you're good. But what's better than a hammer? A nail gun, pap, 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 three nails and you're done. That gives you more time to focus on other tasks. So no code tools gives you, gives you new skills and new powers. A great example of this is uh, two gentlemen, part of the Webflow community, uh, they would always get clients to make websites for, and they've always asked, hey, can you make a membership part of my site? And um, still to this day, Webflow doesn't have that type of feature. But this, these two gentlemen, uh, Duncan and Tyler, one is a designer and one is a developer. And they were able to create a platform called MemberStack, and the designer creates the actual UI and the platform on top of Webflow where the developer creates functions on a separate server to make their idea happen. And a year later, they have a huge user base. They have now an investor which allowed them to hire employees and they're building for not just Webflow uh, community but other communities as well to take advantage of their platform. And they're only 23 and 24 years old. I mean, so no code tool, no code is happening everywhere and it's helping the web evolve. So today anyone could get into these no code tools to start learning the core concepts or fundamentals of, of a coding language, then execute on your ideas for a new website or a new app without having to code manually. And if you think about it, no code is a way to no code so you can no code. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. Great, thanks so much, Nelson. Um, I'm really excited to kind of hear, in particular, kind of seeing in the space, and I didn't know that about MemberStack, also having a pretty young founding team. I'm sure I see some of the founding team of VoiceLow in here who is also quite young, so it's really exciting to see this younger generation be able to come in and help empower so many different people, um, not only people of their own age, but also younger generations or even older generations who are able to, to visually understand things that may have been complexity, like 
maybe have been uh, uh, left behind in some of their previous educations. So that's really awesome to see. Cool. Mm -hmm. With that, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to get into some questions. So let me jump back into that. So there is my present button. So clearly, um, I know I'm not the only one who feels this way, but when I think about Nelson and I think about Webflow, you guys are very synonymous in um, both the expertise side, both in trying to help people understand what is really pushing the limits of what's capable on that platform. I originally had what was the first thing that you built with no code, but you kind of went straight for that in your presentation. So out of curiosity, what was the first thing that you built with Webflow? Um, I think at the time, so I was an in-house web designer over at Illumina, a biotech company here in San Diego. And I think one of the first things I was building was um, the a new homepage for Illumina, for Illumina.com. And at the time, Webflow was just a landing page builder. You couldn't add multiple pages it was just one page you can make you couldn't add custom code you can there was no cms it was very basic but the fact that html and css was being written for you in real time and you're designing in a visual way blew my mind and um i was able to export the code from uh webflow and put it into uh the the uh, environment at Illumina. So that was one of the first things I built. That's awesome. Um, and just out of curiosity, what was the last thing that you built with Webflow? The most recent pixelgeek.community. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I desperately hope that we do have a question that's in here about community and the importance. So I hope that you're able to speak a little bit more about kind of what you're building there. Okay. Cool. Um, so this is something that I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of people see Webflow and no code as this thing that has just appeared out of thin air. When in all reality, it has been going around for years. Yes. <laughs> and um, this is something that even like if you were to compare some of the more recent ones that have come out of the woodworm, that there's been so much change. There's been so much evolution. What are some evolutions or some milestones that really stand out to you over the last? Um, over the last decade even of no code and it doesn't have to just be with webflow um the the idea of webflow and i love to hear the story uh, the history of webflow uh from vlad um is that he started this idea in 2007 and he just kept going with it and, um and he didn't give up so it's it's a it's a lovely story and um, the milestones that stand out were obviously, I mean, to me, it's all the small to huge updates because with Webflow, it's like a new toy every time a new update comes out. So when you were able to create multiple pages, you freaked out. It's like, oh my God. We can make full websites with this. When you, you can add Google fonts to it, when you can add custom code. One of the biggest ones was Webflow interactions. When that came out and you're able to create JavaScript uh, events and um, JavaScript triggers and actions and animations without having to code, that opened the door to so much. It's basically like Flash came back. You know, um, and if you think about it, Flash was no code because you're able to create animations without having to code. You can go straight on the canvas and put it on a web page. And this is what uh, Webflow Interactions is to me. It, it's basically Flash again. But let's not get too crazy with it like the Flash days, right? So, like I tell everyone in my streams, with great power comes great responsibility. But um, that and then um, uh, the CMS coming out and then Interactions 2.0, Webflow e-commerce, and, um, and yeah, 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 it's just on and on and on. You can go to webflow.com slash updates and just scroll back until the beginning. That's awesome to hear. I actually, I never thought about the interactions like being Flash or that Flash is, I guess, in a lot of ways, like no code. 
Um, I like yeah. distinctly remember my like high school days animating like a bouncing ball in Flash for Everyone like starts a week. There. Yeah, <laughs> so it's so exciting to hear. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to like tinker on that one for a while. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, so this is something that I know you and I talk a lot about. Um, we really care about this back at Voicelow. I know you really care about this with what you're building, uh, even your recently launched Pixel Geek community. So why do you think community and the space of no code matters so much? What What's the importance of it specifically to you? Community is basically humans. And I care about humans so much. And where it started was when I was helping on the Webflow um, forums. Before I was an employee, I was helping on the Webflow forums. And um, and at the time, I was struggling personally um, at one point, And I just didn't help on the forums anymore. And a couple months later, I get an email saying, with a... And saying, hey, someone mentioned your name, your, ta your, your handle on the Webflow forums, those automatic emails. And when I opened up the link, it was from this community member who says something to the tune of, hi, um, I don't know if it's against the rules, but uh, has anyone seen Pixel Geek? I haven't seen him in a while. Is he still, is he still here? And I was in a bad spot at that time. But just getting that one email, I was like, someone, someone cares? Whoa, okay, I'll get back onto it. So I said a little lie. I said, oh, I'm just super busy and I'll get back into it. Thank you, thank you for, for caring. But that little note made me realize that people that I've helped notice. So let me continue on to this. And I continued, and a couple months later, after helping the uh, Webflow community for two and a half years on my own free time, the Web, uh, Webflow CEO, Vlad, asked if I wanted to join the team. And obviously, I was over the moon. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe this is happening. But then, I was like, wait, I can't keep this happiness to myself. It's unfair. I need to give it back as much as possible. I need to give, I wish I can give it in a physical way to everyone that I meet, but that's not possible. But what I can do is continually teach and share my knowledge for free so that everyone can learn and hopefully inspire them to teach the next generation. And to me, that's what the no code community and community in general is supposed to do. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do on pixelgeek.community is continually share everything I can and bring up everyone who loves building and teaching. And that way we can all grow together. Um, and my tagline at the end of every video, even my first ever video on my YouTube channel is make the web beautiful. But recently I've added the word together. And um, that's why I love coming on to these Zoom calls, meetups, um, and, and doing live streams every Saturday on my YouTube channel. Uh, not to, not for growth, but to build a community with empathy and honesty. Because when it comes to humans, we are all user experiencers. We're all humans. And bringing up uh, the fact that we're all struggling to learn these things and helping people, um, helping people make better human experiences for their clients, which then dom uh, dominoes to their clients' clients. And so we're saving so much time, not for ourselves, but also for our clients and hopefully for their clients. Then we can all have more time to learn and do other things that we want to do. So yeah, long answer, but always think about the humans is, that's my thing. I absolutely love that. And as somebody who has been watching along your videos for years, uh, being able to see 
how much you get tagged in all of these things on Twitter. I've seen your names in the forums well before I saw your streams. So I, I think that that's something that's so interesting and important about community is that it's not just about building the best platform out there. It's about building the best experience and about sharing what is possible on that. Because a platform, especially a design tool, is only as powerful as what people feel like they can design on it. It's really our job to be the canvas and it's the people that make, well, things beautiful. And so I, I love that as a theme and really excited to see more people come on board um, as you continue to kind of create this home for them on the internet. That's wonderful. <laughs> All right, so this is something that I think is is really important about no code outside of um, outside of ages, outside of people's background knowledge is no code also provides the opportunity for people who may not have access to the education or access to the devices that we've had uh, or that we grew up with. So what are some of your thoughts about no code and the technical divide or the digital divide as some other people describe? Yeah, when it comes to at least access to technology, access to um, the internet, that's a bigger problem that I don't think uh, just the no code community can solve. Um, if you can create really quickly some sort of um, movement or fundraiser to help with that, and if you don't know how to make a website or don't know how to make an app, don't know how to make your own like Kickstarter type platform, you might be able to do it no code and it might help further along this progress that we need. Uh, but when I think about the technical divide on a bigger scale, um, big fan of SpaceX, hence why I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> but um, like the fact that they're creating Starlink for rural areas to have internet uh, up to like a uh, hundred megabits per second, that's amazing to me. Um, more people donating uh, laptops uh, to children. And I mean, it's something that's really needed, especially now during the COVID days where schooling is at home. We need internet everywhere. We need um, uh, uh, laptops everywhere. But if a ch child has access to both, there's still the problem of UX. Do we have a simple enough, more a s a very streamlined user experience, not just on the on the computer screens, not on just on the digital screens, but from start to end when someone wakes up then to going through their class virtually and then ending their day what's that whole user experience like and how can we as humans streamline that whole process hearing all these um or seeing these news stories of of teachers parents and students being frustrated by like i don't know how to use this i, I don't have access to this and then it slows the whole uh, process down of teaching and then teachers getting overwhelmed having to learn new tools um it just shows that we're really behind in empathizing and thinking about the humans not the users the humans for each experience so um yeah it's a huge question yeah, it's a, it's a big question. And I think like a lot of different companies, a lot of people outside of no code as well as inside of no code are really here to try to solve. And um, I'm like thankful in a lot of ways that it, it's definitely helped on the education side, but the access side to your point uh, with, uh, with SpaceX and some of the work that they've been doing and like Facebook as well, I know has done some stuff um, is kind of that missing piece of it. It's one step yeah. of being able to turn on those devices and get access. The second is, what do you do with it now? Um, and I think these tools really help to expedite that. Yeah. So this is something that I know that it's really near and dear to your heart. And I almost always, well, use this question, but saying, how do you explain what you do to your parents? I think in this case, um, it's the kids that are the most excited about what it is that we're working on. So. How do you explain what you do to your daughter out of curiosity? Um, if she understood, um, <laughs> I would tell her doing my best to make other humans happier uh, 
yeah, doing my best with all the resources I have to make other humans happier. That's it in a nutshell. I love that. <laughs> I, I can go deeper into that, but I mean, I, you know, that, that's me. Huh. <laughs> no, it's important to understand the core of what you're doing and what's important mm -hmm. and what's kind of a byproduct of that. So that, that's really, yeah. really great to hear. Um, on the business side of this, and I'm, I know that you've worked with a ton of different startups and you definitely query a lot of questions from startups or businesses in general, but what do you think no code means for the future of business or the future of work? Um, it means more ideas, more ideas coming from not just developers or entrepreneurs, but designers, um, let, letting designers, uh, think with a design and empathetic mindset and giving them access to build a business on top of that idea um right now again the the barrier to entry to build a business has been super high before no code um but again if you have an idea because you've experienced something that you're like this is a bad experience what if i can make something easier you know uh what would that be like and go for it on your own. So the future of business with no code is a lot more ideas being worked on and, um, and a lot more products that are helping those ideas come along. And again, member stack, voice flow, Zapier, and all these other things. If it wasn't for these no code tools, I wouldn't been able to build my own community website. Uh, go back to YouTube, um, opening up the doors for everyone to have their own channel. You know, what would, what would the world be like? You know, um, there's so many YouTubers now that are doing great work and sharing their, sharing their knowledge with people. And uh, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, I think especially like what topic that we talk about a lot internally is like there's designers, there's developers, and then there's, there's creators. There's more broadly speaking, people mm, who don't a hundred percent fall into a work title that would describe them as a designer, but have these ideas, have these thoughts, want to take it to that next step. And I, I think that like, I would definitely categorize myself as one of those where I am definitely not the best designer out in the world. Definitely not a good developer, but get a lot of benefit out of getting access to these tools myself. Yeah. Cool. Um, so we talk a lot about kind of where we've been um, and kind of where we're at right now. What are some of the predictions that you might have in the future? And I've had this conversation with some people who hit me with like 10 years down the road, I see X, or maybe there's something that's a little closer to the forefront, but kind of curious to hear your thoughts. Um. I don't know what the future holds. Um, I just know that there's a lot of things happening uh, in the no code community of people building on their ideas faster. And what ideas will be out there in 10 years? I don't know. Um, and I just tweeted this out to, I think it was your CEO. Uh, what was his name again? Braden. Yeah. 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 I was just tweeting uh, with the, so uh, someone tweeted at like, if you can take the UI of X and use <laughs> the features of Y, what would it be? And I thought the UI of voice flow, where you can just connect things together, just these mm -hmm. things that you would speak, but with the features of Neuralink. So you can just have a thought and then voice flow triggers and finds the data for you and puts the answers into your head all without speaking <laughs> so thought flow or flow flow or whatever flow flow as I Braden mean, said yeah <laughs> maybe that'll be a thing you know uh it's uh it's not gonna be what we think about right now it's not gonna look mm -hmm. anything like we we think about right now i mean if you ask someone in the 60s that we're gonna be able to be like a Dick Tracy where you're taking phone calls on your, on your watch or like the Jetsons where yeah. you're, you're able to like have video calls 
on your computer screen or on your home TV, you know? Um, who knows? What I do hope for the, for the future, if no code could help in some way, <laughs> let's get to Mars. <laughs> You're just pro SpaceX right now. <laughs> I'm pro space. And okay. that, and, and because SpaceX is moving that needle faster than any of the space programs we've had in the past, um, makes me excited. And the reason why I'm excited about space exploration is because <laughs> it's it's a culmination of humans from all different age groups, all different backgrounds, all different hobbies, all different religions, all different races, all coming together for one goal to do something or to answer a question that humans have never answered before and people take years decades out of their lives for one moment um and it doesn't matter what space program like for example um uh the european space program uh agency landed uh landed a robot on an asteroid and it took 10 years for that to happen it's just amazing to, it makes me tear up that we as humans can come together and do something like that. Um, and that's what I love about, you know, community that we can all come together and build something that's bigger than ourselves and help people learn and do things we've never done before. Let's continually do that. No, I, th I think that's great. I think that like, especially like one of the most satisfying parts to kind of go into your point about community, maybe not as crazy as going to space, um, but um, is that it, this whole exponential curve of learning is all off of knowing what's possible. And the hardest thing about um, no code is that sometimes it's gotten so good to the point where you can't even tell was that built with code was that built with no code or um oh like i can't even wrap my mind around how i could do something like this like build a membership site or build a hmm. dynamic forum with no code or things like that hmm. but as people continue to share what it is that they're building i believe that our expectations and also what the average person can do will also exponentially become much bigger become much grander um, just like how the early internet with coders used to basically just be pamphlets. And now we have entire applications and entire um, multimodal experiences that are built off the exact same interface. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so I know that there's a lot that kind of comes in with creating and kind of going through discovering new tools. You're definitely an early adopter. <laughs> so what are some of the biggest challenges that you face in your no-code journey or kind of in, in your journey that you've gotten to the point now where you're creating for the aspect of sharing? Um, biggest challenge you face in your no-code journey. Um, one of them was at the time trying to convince people that Webflow is going to be a thing. <laughs> people at the time were like, no, Joomla, Drupal, WordPress is the thing. What, what is this Webflow thing? No, no. And then it turned into, no, manual coding is the way to go. You don't want some robot doing this coding for you. No, my code is cleaner. <laughs> um, another thing I, I had to go through because I really, really wanted to tell more people about it uh, is I'm, I'm actually an introvert. But because I have this passion for no code, um, I had to learn public speaking. And so learning that was tough, but uh, I got through it. And uh, yeah, so that was one of the things I had to get through. Um, what else? Just continually trying to learn new features that come along in Webflow, but now, it's grown to new features on all these other tools because when a new tool updates and it says, Hey, you can do this now. I'm like, Oh my God, I want to <laughs> learn that, but I don't have time. Ah! So time is always the biggest challenge for everyone. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, so you kind of touched a little bit on this with in particular, there's always this like no code doesn't mean 
no code at all or doesn't mean that technical folks can't get anything out of it. So what's kind of your opinion on technical, um, technical people and what they can get out of no code? Yeah, so I've already um, touched on this during my talk and um, yeah, it'll just make them more proficient with their tools. Um, it'll make them faster. It'll open the door to more complex things. Um, and if you're still using, taking a Photoshop Figma XD document and then opening up an IDE and typing HTML head title body if you're still doing that manually uh and then no code tool starts to take away your clients because it's helping more people do stuff faster you can't wait for the world you can't expect the world to wait for you to catch up you need to continually learn something new every day technology updates so fast and if you're in the technology industry, you need to continually learn something new. Um, even if it's a small trick, learn something new every day because that's how fast technology works. And, um, and, and yeah, it's just, an, again, a natural evolution and it's happening faster and faster and faster, especially with no-code tools. So be open to learning new things and be open to joining these no code communities because we're very helpful. We want to help each other <laughs> learn. Awesome. Yeah. I think like, especially with a lot of the no code tools, like if there are definitely times where like, I wish that I was more proficient in JavaScript as an example and going into and um, going into some of these no code tools, finding a code block, finding markup, finding a place where I can get more custom. And I know with voice Low, we have a lot of people who come in and they love our code block or API block, which are technical blocks. Um, and we deal with all of the boring backend, the skeleton, the, the things that make sure that those pieces communicate with each other so they can really focus on the important stuff, that experience, the meat behind it, the logic and, and the experiences for passing that on for other people on their team as well. So that, I think that part is always the, the bread and butter of, okay, yes, custom code will always be custom to you, but do you really want to spend your time doing the foundational work or do you want to spend your time doing the work that really, really matters? Um, and yeah. people tend to be excited about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is one of the biggest misconceptions that you've heard about no code or about some of the tools that you use? Um, I guess it just goes back to that other question. Um, you know, it's going to take away my job. The code isn't clean enough. Um, I think one of them, no, thinking about it more, it's like, I'm scared of these tools that I'm locked down in these tools, you know, um, uh, that I won't be able to take my code with me, but I know that with Webflow, you can export your code and you get everything. You can export your database out of Webflow, which we call collections, and you get it as a CSV uh, file. So you can take that and go about your day. You can leave us at any time. It's totally fine. You can export as many times as you want. So as long as the no-code tool has a way for you to um, take your stuff with you, I mean, it, it's all fine. Awesome. Do you think that there'll ever be a time where no-code will reach parity with custom code or, or low-code? You think there'll ever be a time when no code will be? Um, hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Do you think there'll ever be a time where no code will reach parity? Uh, I mean, custom. It, it depends. You know, like custom code. Just humans are naturally flawed, and so when we write code, we're writing it in our own style. And so if a no-code tool can write that code more cleanly, then it'll always be better than custom code. But the fact that with Webflow, you can add your own custom code still just opens up the door to more things. So 
not sure if that answers your question, but yeah, yeah. no worries. It's a thought exercise. Uh, it mm -hmm. was actually, uh, it was a question that was brought up to me by uh, the team at Adalo who are very bullish on no code becoming a replacement for, for code or for greater custom code. And uh, mm -hmm. it got me thinking, it was just like, do I think that there'll ever be a moment in time where no code is the default and custom mm -hmm. code is, um, is an addition onto it. Um, yeah, so there's no correct it'll, answer. <laughs> it'll always, it'll always be like that in my opinion, because, um, there will always be a thing that no code tools cannot do mm -hmm. as good as, uh, developers who are creating the newer code. Like for example, Webflow doesn't just now got, uh, added CSS background clipping to the styles panel but that's been around for many, many years. So it, to make something, uh, to make code visual and a good user experience so a user can understand how to make that CSS code happen without code, that takes time. So, yeah. Okay, great. Um, what's one of the best stories that you've heard with someone mm -hmm. building something with no code or, or maybe a project specifically that stands out? Uh, obviously member stack is a great story. Jet boost is a good story of someone, uh, Chris, Chris Sprague's, um, uh, making something on top of Webflow that Webflow community members have needed for a while that Webflow doesn't do yet. Uh, but my favorite stories is when someone is able to do something, uh, that they've always wanted to do or uh, do something that they want to do for their full-time job and now they can do it with more with more passion behind it you know for example this uh one gentleman i remember he told me that he was working in the united states but his family and his kid uh were back in mexico and he learned about webflow and started using webflow more and he was able to get uh side projects so he's working full time doesn't really like his job but he's doing side projects outside of work and more and more, he would get more side projects and to the point where he left his job and he does freelancing full time and he's making U.S. dollars and he's able to move back to Mexico making U.S. dollars and providing for his family and still loving what he does. That, those type of things mm -hmm. I love hearing and this is the type of stuff that I love uh, when when I say no code opens the doors for more people, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, those are my favorite stories. Like we we've been fortunate enough to have a few of those pop up from our voice low community, nice. and really being able to see like be on a first name basis with these people, like have them tell their stories, feel and hear like the excitement and just like sheer joy in their voice when they're able to go and work on something that's totally new and be a part of that, even in a small way, is, is so rewarding. Um, so that, that's so exciting that you get, to, you get to have so many of those conversations and, and really see those things come to life. And we have a f just three more questions um, as we kind of kick things off, um, or I guess end things off for the day. But um, what are some ways that you would recommend people getting started with no code? Where, where should they start? What are some places that they should look? Obviously, Webflow is a great resource, but what are some other places that you'd recommend? Um, it depends on which tool you want to go towards. Uh, for me, I found Webflow as a great place, uh, a great tool, and they have a forum, an online community, and I joined it right away. And that's where I started to learn. Um, find the tools community and start interacting with them. People will help. And that's how you can get started. Ask any question. Don't be afraid to ask the most basic question because people genuinely want to help. Look for that question on Google, on YouTube. People are making tutorials all the time, myself included. We want to help. So don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to learn something new every day. Awesome. Out of curiosity, what's your go-to tech stack right now? Wasm. 
that's freak web, that down. <laughs> that's Webflow, Airtable, Zapier, and Member Stack. And uh, there's a a gentleman who created uh, Maker Threads. That's his website, and he sells shirts for the no code community. And one of his shirts <laughs> says Wasm. And I'm like, yeah, I want that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. And like we'd mentioned kind of in this, like obviously we communicate with a lot of people that are in the no-code community on Twitter, on forums, wherever we can find them. But what are some of the people that you like to watch out for or that you would recommend people go check out if they want to build their no-code following? Uh, who are the ones to watch in the no-code community? Um, there's a lot. I mean, of <laughs> course, I always keep my eye on Webflow. But the people to to watch, um, if uh, Mackenzie Child, who as, who's at flomingo.co, uh, Visual Dev Podcasts. Uh, my boss Ben, he runs that. Ben Parker. So Visual Dev uh, Who else? Who else? Hold on. Let me go to my community site. I have it listed. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh yeah, MakerPad. No code report, uh, and, and yeah. And if you want to follow me, it's youtube.com slash pixelgeek or the pixelgeek.community. We also have a shout out for FinSuite. <laughs> yes, FinSuite does some crazy stuff. Is FinSuite the one that did the customize your font in, C in the CMS tool? I feel yes. like I saw that. Is, is that they them? did some crazy stuff with the rich text editor. And yes. I even told him, I'm like, <laughs> are you, Joe, are you giving the user too much power? Because <laughs> like uh, with this, you can basically MySpace it up. <laughs> so we just need like um, animated GIF backgrounds and a mouse trails and, and whatnot. And the only way to read text is by highlighting it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's pretty sweet. Uh, I, mean, uh, <laughs> I will, I will link all sweet. of these things. <laughs> I will link all of these things in, in the resources awesome. as well. Great. So kind of with that, um, I had put a bunch of the questions in there. We seem to be right at the end. Does anyone have any last minute questions for Nelson? Um, and then if not, um, I will leave you to leave us with a little parting wisdom as we close things off. So we'll just give that a second to see. I think we are good. Is there any parting wisdom that you'd like to leave us with? Other than obviously join pixelgeek.community when you get a chance, if you'd like to get more of Nelson. <laughs> Lead with empathy and honesty build things with empathy and honesty there's not enough of that going around listen more speak less and i think it'll make everyone's day just a little bit better that's it great thanks so much nelson um and thanks everybody Thank for joining today um, so if you guys love this session, um, we're going to be sending out a recording of this so you can listen back to all the wisdom, all of the recommendations, all the things that Nelson was able to share with us today. Uh, we also have a few more events that are coming up. So if you're curious about, uh, tuning into our version of Nelson, Nico, um, in his live builds that happen every Thursday, the next one is next Thursday. Uh, we have a community AMA as well as a session on marketing and voice. So how can you kickstart how you get your first few users with your voice application? And all of those will be available uh, on our events page. And if you guys aren't already a part of it, definitely check out our community. We care a lot about answering your questions, uh, engaging with you guys and hearing where you're at. So if you're not already a part of that, check that out on Facebook or using the bit.ly link slash voice load community right there. And last but not least, uh, don't forget to check out voiceflow.com slash events. We'll have all of our previous streams on there as well as upcoming events like this. So thank you so much, guys. And thank you, Nelson, particularly for joining us today. All right. With that, thank you. we're done for the day. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>